Welcome back to the channel everybody. In this video we are going to lift this wall and the very first thing that we do is we check the height and the reach and compare that to the weight of the wall and the load tables. So to that end I just go ahead and I hook on my open reel tape and send it up. So if you look at your chart, for 40 degrees and G, I kind of feel like we have a better shot here. I feel like staring down at it, looking this way, it feels closer in distance than back over there. Yeah. And if we're moving it this way, if anything, you know, we're closer to our goal. Yeah. Yeah, let's try that. So it turns out that was a no-go. By the time we looked at the load chart, without with um, no outriggers, there's no way. Basically, we'd be at max. So, plan B, try it from the back, which honestly was the smarter way to do it to begin with. Now, I do wanna say, please do not attempt to imitate the things that you see here unless you are forklift and rigging certified. I'm just trying to show some things to help you be safe. Okay, so now we're gonna get the height of the wall. We're gonna try to locate the machine. We're gonna measure the height of the wall plus rigging. All of that good stuff. Spoilers, this was the place we should have tried it to begin with. Oh, hey, and it started to rain, so that's always nice. <laughs> that's springtime, at least it wasn't super cold. I have talked about this before, here is the proof. We always do, I mean, one, you can't really over communicate, but we always discuss it, get everybody's input. There we're choking up the rigging a little bit. We want, the, we want a good angle, but we also don't need it to be vertical because then that just increases the height. One thing too, you notice right at the peak of the rake wall, I've got a couple of blocks scabbed on. The reason is, is that rake wall was just a little longer than 20 foot. We had 20 foot material for top plates. Those will actually get cut out for the ridge beam anyway. Here we go. Do we have uh, the right bits and the impactors? No. I don't know, I shouldn't even say that, I haven't looked. This one, we have one of them is for sure. Yeah, one of them's good. Okay. okay. I got two of them. <laughs> nice. Okay. So I think I'm going to end up standing back here. If you kind of watch and then I'll kind of maybe be back and forth. I don't really know. Should get video of all the water sliding off of this thing. All right, all right, all right. So the forklift is up close to the building. Outriggers are down, so nice and stable. The wall weighs much less than the rating on the truss jib, the chain, the rigging, the forklift itself, etc. Now, kind of on the fence about the location, but we decided, hey, I think it's in a good enough spot that we can go ahead and lift it, not move the machine. But as you can see, I don't really like the angle of that rigging. But going out and up, it it worked. It worked just fine. You'll see as we go through. I would just need it to get it popped, I think. So as you can see, this wall was partially framed over the garage, which of course is low because concrete would be poured over that later. Of course, we'll get into that. We'll have waterproofing, all that good stuff. Since it was tacked to all of that to keep it you know, square and parallel and all that good stuff. Kyle just uses the multi-tool with the Diablo, like uh, nail cutting blade. Anyway, that's all pretty self-explanatory. I showed that in real time just so you could see kind of the sound of the wall when it starts to come up. I'm speeding this up because quite frankly, we don't need to just sit there and go in real time for this whole video. I mean, ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, so again, we rigged it so that the wall could come off the floor, but you can see that it's a little out of level just due to the, basically the angle that the machine is to the wall, doesn't matter. We're gonna go up and in, and then we're gonna lean the machine. And I mean, it all makes sense, right? We're saving loads of time. It turned out that wall from um, top, top of the peak to the subfloor is about 18 feet tall. And I believe it was 38 feet long. Weighed just a little less than 3,000 pounds. The other wall was 3,000 pounds of siding. We're gonna call this one 2,500 pounds. 
Can you angle yours into the pocket? Okay. Lean that way. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. How many degrees are you? How many degrees are you? I can't see your hands. Two, okay. Then let's do, we'll slowly boom down. I think we got it. Okay, Kyle, before you reef on anything, I really want us to communicate. Okay, so that's down. Can you push out in the middle? Just like a few inches. Okay, so basically, we're right at that balance point. So, wow, that really changes the look of things. How much? Yeah, there is. So we gotta go to the back about a half. Yeah, to the back a half, but give me one sec. I've said it before and I will say it again. Noah really has a good soft touch with the controls. It makes this a whole lot less stressful and safe. Safe, safe, safe. I'm gonna call that. Like 316th is all we need. <laughs> Oftentimes we can just pick the wall just a hair, but at this point it was like, ah, we can get that with a sledgehammer. So we did. Well, Kyle with his muscles on the sledgehammer. We're close, man. Try, uh, yeah. I mean, we're close. Is he, uh, oh, it's the wind. I could live with that, dude. Unless you think you can get another, like, it's like a heavy 16th is all we need. That's good. Oh, I can go into the pony wall. Now you know the drill, five inch SDWS timber screw. Remember, these are the screws that are made for deck ledgers. Okay. Nice big head on them, pulls that wall nice and tight to the line. Ouch. Now it's the same thing at the top. I'm gonna to go through the soffit framing, which remember was all stitched up to the top plates. So think of it as an extension of the top plate. And what that's gonna do is pull the wall together. We can always move something if we need to later, but there's, the nails are nowhere near as strong as the screw. I'll have to reload on the screws, but at this point, oh, I got a couple of big guys. do you? Oh, nice. I come 
We found over the years that if we just use a few of these and push the wall to the line now, it's it's pretty easy while the rigging is there. And if, if you're a cheapskate, then just pull the two later after you've nailed it. See, I like having the uh, the pony wall here. Is that the line? All right. Okay, I'm going to... Yeah, yeah, and then I'm going to take this down because we're going to need it. So what do you think? I think one, one brace to that first stud back, and then maybe one in the middle and one toward the end, and then with that guy, I don't think we got to worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Something removable, obviously. My hands are cold. <laughs> I can't. I can't even feel your hands, dude. My hands are actually pretty warm. Also, that was just a little creepy. Oh! And now it is time to brace. We're going to use 20 footers and we're going to use structural screws because they are easier to take down, significantly stronger than nails, and it's going to be windy and the weekend. Okay, let me get my uh, cleat locked down. Plus, we can reuse the screws. So I cut it on an angle just so I can get two screws through the brakes. If you just go to a corner and you scab blocks on top, well, it just takes longer to take apart, and it's not any stronger. It's not stronger at all. We're using the Stabila LAX 300G, I believe it is. So we always just measure arbitrarily four inches off the bottom plate, or if the bottom plate hasn't been pulled to the line, then we pull off of the line. When Kyle has four inches up where he's at, then I go ahead and fasten mine down. Not bad, bro. We'll take the rigging down. Okay, that wasn't too bad. You know, it took a while, but we... Here's a look at the rigging itself. So it's a three and a quarter ton shackle that just goes up underneath the bottom plate. We've got the lifting slings that are each rated for more than the weight of the wall by quite a bit. Of course, the adjustable leg chain on the forklift, et cetera, et cetera. This has worked out to be an amazing way to lift walls. Again, do not do this unless you've run the calculations and have the training. We have done both, and so there we are. I mean, you saw how the wall went up. Easy to take down, easy to set up. Who doesn't like easy? 12-foot ladder, that ladder is just fiberglass um, tripod ladder. Tripod ladders are more stable. Um, they're, they're standard here, but I get a lot of comments on Instagram, especially where people have never seen them. So I don't know, there you go. Super, super um, stable. Absolutely love them. So there's a little bit better look at the rigging. What, what we do is we just reattach everything because it's just easier to keep it all together. Of course, always inspect your chain, inspect the shackle, inspect the sling. That's all part of it. And so you saw that earlier where we're discussing this. <clears throat> I really encourage everybody, double check me. We'll double check each other. That's the Cornerstone Industries Trust Jib, fully extended. It's rated higher if you don't fully extend it, but we needed the reach. The advantage of this thing is, is that when you tilt up, you gain more height without having to move the machine or move the stick up. So it gives you, gives you some more possibilities. One other thing I wanna mention, notice that we have not staggered the joints on our zip sheathing. You do not need to do that. And the reason is, is because we're fully blocked on all the panel edges. That whole thing now acts like a shear wall. Well, not acts like, acts like a shear wall, it is a shear wall. It acts like a single panel. Then from that bottom row of blocking, we're gonna go all the way down to the mud cell. 
And of course, there's the pony wall that is framed to the top of the floor. So, nice and strong, easy details. I'd say tilt way up and come down. It's like, I can totally get that. Glad my hand is out of the way. <laughs> Nicely done, guys. Nicely done. As always, do not attempt to do this without proper training. Make sure you do your safety checklist in your meetings. I'm not just saying that because here we are on YouTube. This is what we do. I don't want anybody going home injured. I don't save any time by being cowboys about this. Okay, getting off my soapbox now. Mostly because I'm not wearing fall protection up here on this giant soapbox. There we go. So it is now just a matter of doing some cleanup and figuring out what do we want to do the rest of the day. Thank you everybody for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you feel like there's any value here. And frankly, even if you don't, just do it. But just do it. Just consider it your good Samaritan deed. I don't think that's a proper application of that term. But anyway, we will see you all in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy and be safe. Be safe, everybody.